Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren Fix, and today's assignment is the 2024 Jaguar F-Type. This, sadly, is the last of these sexy convertible and coupe versions that are V8 supercharged. Today, we'll be driving across the Pyrenees Mountains, some beautiful roads, and we get to experience the true performance and the handling of the 75 edition. The P575, which is the coupe, and we'll also be driving the convertible on day two, so you want to stay for that, and that is the 475. Now, you still can get a version that is not a 75 edition. We'll not be covering that today. We'll do that in a separate review. Let's get started with some of the features that make this vehicle better than last year's model. Starting with the suspension. There's been some updates to the suspension. You've got bigger bearings and bigger knuckles underneath. This is going to give this car better contact to the road riding on Pirelli P0 tires. You'll also note some special badging across the front all blacked out and your R edition here. And on the convertible, it's also blacked out, but this is not the R edition. So when you order what you want, it's going to either be rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. Today, this test vehicle is all-wheel drive and the convertible will be rear-wheel drive. You'll also note the LED signature headlights and those are also in the taillights. There's a couple other changes on the inside, but mostly it has to do with badging and the handling improvements as well as the transmission. They've done a wonderful job making this sexy coupe and convertible improved for 2024 and sadly, the last edition. There's a little bit of history about the Jaguar you need to know before we take it for a drive. The Jaguar company made a big splash in 1948 with the introduction of the new sports car, the XK120. By 1954, 12,000 of the XK120s have been sold. Fast forward to 1961, Jaguar launched what became the most iconic and beautiful sports car of all time, the E-Type. The E-Type was instantly recognizable. The Jaguar E-Type is widely regarded as one of the most important and pretty sports cars of all times. The next generation, the F-Type, debuted in 2014 just 10 years ago. The F-Type was modernized with performance and luxury grand touring experience and everyday reliability of a sports car. The Jaguar F-Type is the definitive Jaguar sports car with a rich blood spanning over 75 years. This is the final version of the 75 edition. Under the hood of the convertible is a 444 horsepower engine. They're calling it the P450. Zero to 60 time is 4.4 seconds and it rides on 20 inch alloy wheels. Under the bonnet is a supercharged 5 liter V8 engine with direct injection. With 444 horsepower for the P450 or 575 for the P575. Now these come in coupe and convertible bodies so you can pick which engine and which trim level. The 0 to 60 time for the P450 is 4.4 seconds. The P575 is 3.5 seconds. All vehicles ride on 20 inch alloy wheels on Pirelli P0 tires. All wheel drive is optional and a rear electric active differential and adaptive dampers make this vehicle handle even better. So we're going to be driving these Jaguars over two days. So we started off with the coupe, which is 575 horsepower, supercharged V8, and you can really feel the power. It just sounds good. Now there are some updates to the suspension, makes it a little bit more responsive, and you can definitely feel it on these roads going through the Pyrenees Mountains here in Spain as we make our way from one coast to the other. We're going from the Mediterranean to the Atlantic really nice roads, just beautiful country. And the one thing that's really nice about this vehicle is you have a great vehicle to do the drive versus just some sedan or SUV. If you're gonna do this and you're gonna come to Europe and rent a car, make sure it's something fun like a Jaguar. But this car really sticks nicely. Part of that is Pirelli P0 tires. Got good horsepower, good throttle response. The brakes are preloaded so you can feel them kick in. As you touch them, you're getting instant response. Really nice handling. I'm pretty impressed with this. One of the things to note about the gauges in front of you is they are adjustable to put the information there you want. Currently, we are driving in the dynamic mode, which is the race mode. You can see that it puts a D on the screen in front of you. And you can see those lovely curvy roads we have in front of us here up in the Pyrenees Mountains on our way to the Atlantic Ocean from Barcelona, or as they say, Barcelona. Really liking how sticky these tires are 
considering the temperature outside is not necessarily warm, these tires are warming up pretty good. Of course, curvy roads make it a little stickier. Brakes are nice and firm. Safety is standard on all the Jaguars. It's blind spot detection, rear cross traffic alert, forward collision warning, etc. All part of the Jaguar safety suite. And so you don't have to buy up when it comes to safety. These are really safe cars. As far as the other features and technology, the center screen has uh, Meridian Audio, which is what they've been using for a while. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, the touch sensors going in the processor are much faster than the previous generation, so I do appreciate that as well. There is no separate buttons for the controls. You just touch the screen, make it really simple. Some of the competitors, such as Aston Martin, you have to use buttons, which drives me crazy. I want to be able to touch the screen like an iPhone, since we're all comfortable with that. Further down, you've got climate controls, heated and ventilated seats. And then, of course, additional controls you might need for automatic climate. Uh, going down in the center center area, you've got your Prindle, uh, which is pretty normal. It's shifted to the left to get the sport mode. Your drive modes are the little lever to the left of that. When you just put it in dynamic, it shows a little checkered flag. Further back, you can shut off the automatic off at the traffic light, which drives me crazy, so I shut that off. And as well as the exhaust note, you can put that on so you can listen to this engine roar. Or should I say, this Jaguar growl. Sorry, had to do it. It was low hanging fruit. Now, performance levels have not changed since last year's model, but if you're going to get one of these as a collectible, the last ones are the ones to have. So, there's two choices when it comes to the special edition the 75, the last of the sports cars that are gasoline powered. Here is day two where we're going to get to drive the P450. This is 450 horsepower, a little bit different, but this is the convertible. This is what Jaguar is all about. This is the classic when you think of a Jaguar, you don't think of a coupe, although they do make them and I do prefer them. The convertible is what we're going to be driving today as we finish our trip across the Great Pyrenees Mountains and make our way to the Atlantic Ocean. Let's take this one for a drive. So this morning's drive out of the middle of the Pyrenees Mountains on our way to the Atlantic Ocean. We're going to be making a stop at Pamplona. Now, you may have heard of that city. It's where the running of the bulls is. Now, we're not going to be able to drive on that street because it's been locked off so that pedestrians and tourists can come see it. But we're going to get as close as we can. And I may have to chase my co-driver, Javier, down the road. I'm wearing red today, so I guess I'm the bull. Or maybe he's chasing me. We'll figure that out when we get there. Follow us as we make the final drive in the final Jaguar. This is the 450 horsepower, 444. It's nice. I prefer the higher horsepower, but if you just want a nice cruising car, this one will meet your needs. Well, we made it from Barcelona all the way to San Sebastian. Today we drove the P450. I love this car. What a great balance of performance and touring. If you haven't driven a Jaguar in a long time, you have gotta take one for a drive. When they're gone, they're gone. You need to have one in your garage. In the trunk of the convertible, obviously there's less space. They were able to get two laptop cases and uh, a jacket or two. But overall, some of that space is taken up by the convertible top. When it comes to cargo space for the coupe, we were able to get our laptop cases in there. And there's still more room for maybe a piece of luggage. At least my purse fits back there. But overall, it's got a good amount of space in the coupe. Let's talk about pricing. You can buy an R450 without the special edition package, that's 75th anniversary special details, at $79,000. 
If you want to step up to the special edition package, you're going to be at $91,000. And this beauty, the R75P575 with 575 horsepower, my kind of vehicle, add in that all-wheel drive at $2,000 for any of those trim levels. And that's the price point for the final Jaguar. I'm sad to see this vehicle go as I currently race a Jaguar Trans Am car from 2004 when Jaguar ended their racing history. It's going to be disappointing. Let's see what Jaguar has planned for us in the future. I know SUVs is part of that, but they need to stick with sedans and sports cars because that's their history. That's their heritage. I'm sure you've got some comments and questions. Put that in the comments down below. I'm more than happy to get answers for you. And I'm thinking if you want one of these, this is a potential future collectible because when they're gone, they're gone. And you could have one in your garage. And if you got an older one, you probably want a newer one parked next to it just because you have bookends that way. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this one. You can support our channel by buying me a cup of coffee. The link for that is down below, as well as for the website, the book, the podcast, and our social media. Thank you so much for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you next time. And I'm taking this back on the road.